Here comes the last of the information on section 16.7. This is Jacobians for three variables. Well, if you can do Jacobians for two variables, you can do Jacobians for three variables. The one thing that gets a little funky here is you got to remember how to take the determinant of a three by three matrix, which involves breaking them down into three two by two matrices and evaluating them each separately. And of course, when you throw an extra variable into the mix, it becomes a little extra fun. This time, when you take the Jacobian in terms of U, V, and that third variable W, you'll be taking the derivative of each of those X, Y's, and Z's with respect to U, V, and W. So the first line is still the derivative of X with respect to, in this case, U, V, and W. The second line is your partial Y's with respect to U, V, and W. The third line are your partial Z's with respect to U, V, and W. Take the determinant, and then when you were to use it, you would find the absolute value. So let's take a look at this example. I've got three variables in here. I'm going to do a triple integral with respect to some volume where D is bounded by those six planes. The majority of this problem is going to be coming up with the Jacobian. Once we come up with the Jacobian, then we just have to throw them in and come up with an answer at the end. What am I going to do with these six planes? Because I want everything in terms of U's, V's, and W's. Well, look how nicely I organized it. If you look at the first row across, they're both y minus 2x's. The second row across are both z minus 3y's, and the third row across are z minus 4x's. So why not make the first row u, the second row v, and the third row w? All right, so my substitutions are going to be u equals y minus 2x going from where? Going from 0 to 1. So the u values will go from 0 to 1. The v substitution will be v equals z minus 3y, with the v values going from 0 to 1. And the w substitution will be z minus 4x, with the z values going 0 to 3. Now, here's our challenge. We've got these solved for u, v, and w in terms of x, y, and z. What I want is I want three equations, x equals, y equals, z equals. So my goal is three equations, x equals, y equals, z equals, where I have u's, v's, and w's on the right-hand side because that's what I need to take the Jacobian. All right, where do I start? Let's start with that first line, the u equals y minus 2x. So I'll start with u equals y minus 2x. If I add a 2x to both sides, I get u plus 2x is y. So u plus 2x is equal to y. All right, let's look back at that list over there. Can I solve any of them for z? Yeah, let's take this second equation over here and solve it for z. Right, so add a 3y to both sides, and I've got z equals v plus 3y. All right. How about the third equation? The third equation, let's rewrite that as z equals w plus 4x. Well, look at that. Equation 2 and 3 are both equations of z. Right, z equals v plus 3y z equals w plus 4x, let's set them equal to each other. So let's let v plus 3y equal w plus 4x. What's my goal? I'd like one variable. How about x by itself this time? So v plus 3y minus w is equal to 4x, or 4x is equal to v plus 3y minus w. Now, for that y, notice I left a space here. I'm going to come back up here, where y is equal to u plus 2x, and I'm going to replace that y with a u plus 2x. All right, looks like we're getting somewhere. 4x equals v plus 3u plus 6x minus w. Subtract a 6x from both sides, and I get negative 2x equals v plus 3u minus w. 
right? My last task for this part is going to be this. I want X by itself, and I want those U's, V's, and W's in order, because if I have them, it's going to make the Jacobian a whole lot easier. So X equals, let's put the U first, negative 3 halves U plus negative 1 half V plus 1 half W. That's my X. Now let's take that and throw it into this equation that's falling off my screen here. All right, this is one that I underlined in green because that's y equals u plus 2x. Well, here I've got a 2x. Why not throw it in? Yeah, it's going to take a minute to solve, but it's okay. So y equals u plus 2 times negative 3 halves u minus 1 half v plus 1 half w. Oh, look how nice. It clears out the fractions. u minus 3u minus v plus w. So y is equal to negative 2u minus v plus w. And again, I was nice enough to put it in uvw order. All right, how about my z's? Eh, let's see. Let's go with option number two. Option number two is z equals v plus 3y, because I don't have to deal with the fractions. z equals v plus 3 times y, taking that and putting it right over there. Negative 2u minus v plus w. So I get z equals v minus 6u minus 3v plus 3w. All right, let's put that in order negative 5u minus 3v plus 3w. All right, let's set up our Jacobian. I think I have all my x, y's, and z's on the same screen if I move this over just a little bit. Yes, okay. So my Jacobian will be the determinant of all those partial derivatives. So I start with the partial derivative of x with respect to u, with respect to v, with respect to w. Then I can set up the partial y with respect to u, y with respect to v, y with respect to w. Go back to my line over here with the z's. These two coefficients are off. v minus 3v is negative 2v. And this should be a negative 6u. So over here now, that should be a negative 6. I know, u's and v's are terrible letters to use, but that's what the textbook uses, and that's kind of convention, so I'm going to go with it. So negative 6, negative 2, 3. All right, let's set up our Jacobian and evaluate this determinant. By the way, if you want to make those numbers on the top easier, it is true that you can take that negative one half factor and pull it out of a determinant, but you got to do it row by row. In other words, you can't do it for all three rows. It's a negative one half for each row. So let's make it negative one half. And now the top row becomes negative three, negative one, one. And then negative two, negative one, one, negative six, negative two, three. All right, so that's a little trick to make your calculations a little bit easier. The negative one half we're going to pull on the outside. So actually, I'm going to make this positive, positive. So how does this work? First thing is you take that three that's in row one, column one. Knock out row one, column one, and you're left with the two by two, negative one, one, negative two, three. Second one is always the opposite sign. So negative one. And then your four numbers that are left when you knock out row one, column two, is negative two, one, negative six, three. Then plus a negative one times negative two, negative one, negative six, negative two. Okay, now you got to find the determinant of all these little guys. So the negative one half is still on the outside of all of this. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. 
minus. So it goes one diagonal minus the other. So minus a negative 2 minus 1 times negative 6 minus a negative 6. And then minus 1, 4 minus 6. Right, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. So I get 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. That's just going to give me a 0. And then that'll give me a plus 2 times a negative half. So I get negative half times negative 1. The Jacobian is a half. All right, so now if we want that triple integral, we weren't given any other instructions, so all we do is we calculate our triple integral. Boo. There we are. Triple integral. The Jacobian's a half. And then we're going to integrate du dv dw. The u limits of integration went from 0 to 1. The v limits of integration went from 0 to 1. The w limits of integration went from 0 to 3. So this should be pretty quick. Integrate this with respect to u, and I just get u. Evaluated at 1 and at 0 is just 1. Now I integrate from 0 to 1 with respect to v. And again, I get v evaluated at 1 and at 0, which is just 1. Then I integrate from 0 to 3 dw. And that will give me w evaluated at 3 and at 0, which gives me 3. And now multiply by the Jacobian. And when I multiply 3 by a half, I get 3 halves. And that's my answer. So what was it? About 90% of the problem was finding the Jacobian determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. Once I have that, the problem I was given was relatively simple. And so I just have to integrate with the three variables in whatever order I want, just making sure that I match those limits of integration with the correct variable. And that's the end of Jacobians and substitutions.